I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. to episode 135 of the Burning Bush podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today, we're reading the New Testament book of Mark, chapter 8, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Leaf by Oscar Maduro in the Toro 6x52 Vitola. Uh, They don't have very much uh, information at all on the Oscar Tobacco website, so we're going to go on over to Cigars International and see what they have to say. The Leaf Goes Dark I don't know if I've ever heard more calls for us to carry a brand than the droves of CI Nation demanding Leaf by Oscar. Originally starting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Leaf by Oscar has swept the nation, delivering the four, their four boutique brands to cigar enthusiasts everywhere. And I'll be honest, when they landed here, we conducted a little scientific taste test across the line, and they all fit easily under the win column. The fullest bodied of the four offerings, this Maduro is a gorgeous specimen. And before you peek at our picture and wonder what the hell I'm talking about, remember that you're supposed to remove the outer leaf before lighting up. Underneath, you'll find a slick, dark cigar, glistening with oils. Each sample I scarfed down gave off a thick, honey-like sweetness with notes of chocolate and black pepper in the mix. It's a most satisfying combination, especially with a bourbon in the other hand, and I'd recommend you give it a shot today. And the profile is medium to full. Wrapper is Nicaraguan Jalapa. And the, uh, let me see, let me go back to the Leaf by Oscar website here. Uh, wrapper is Nicaraguan, binder is Honduras, and filler is Han- from Honduras. The Vitolas are Robusto, 5x50, Toro, 6x52, 60, 6x60, Torpedo, 6.5x52, and, and the Lancero, 7 by 48 and they won the top 25 of two, uh, 2016 with a 19 rating in Cigar Snob uh, and they got uh, a 91 rating from Cigar Authority in uh, 2016 and an overall rating of 92 from Cigar Snob in 2016 as well so that is the Leaf by Oscar Maduro Let's get into this week's reading of Mark chapter 8. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV. And verse 1 reads, 
In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And Spurgeon comments on verse 4, Where can anyone get enough bread here in this desolate place to feed these people? Why did they not ask their master what he could do in such an emergency as that? After so much experience of his power as they had already had, it's amazing that they did not refer the matter to him. But they did not act wisely. Instead, they began questioning about ways and means. And back to Mark verse 5. And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And Spurgeon says about verse 8, Then they collected seven large baskets of leftover pieces. Jesus is the great master of the art of multiplication. However small is the amount with which we begin, we have only to dedicate it all to him, and he will multiply and increase it until it will go far beyond our utmost expectations, and there will be more left over than there ever was before it began. Let us bring our small talents. For when we bring the little grace we have to Jesus, he can so increase it that we will never know any lack. And continuing in Mark verse 9, And there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the, the, the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, Do you not yet understand? And Spurgeon comments on this section of verse 14 through 21. The disciples had forgotten to take bread and had only one loaf with them in the boat. When there were only a few disciples on board the boat, why did they begin to distrust the Lord because they had only one loaf when he had made enough food for 5,000 and for 4,000 out of a few scanty loaves? Can we not learn from past experience? If the Lord has helped us before, is he not equally ready to help us again? And back to Mark verse 22. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village, and when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? 
and he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not enter the village. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? Spurgeon comments on verse 27, Who do people say that I am? It was Jesus' usual way when he took a walk with his disciples to spend the time in holy conversation. It would be well if we always did the same. We might do much good, and we might get much good, if we made our Lord Jesus the theme of our talks. And I'll reread verse 27 again. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And Spurgeon comments on 29, But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? That is the main point. It matters little what others say about Jesus, whether they're right or wrong, but what is your opinion? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. We know from Matthew's Gospel that Jesus said his Father in heaven had revealed this to Peter. And back to Mark verse 30. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels." And then we'll end with chapter 9, verse 1. It's a continuation of this thought here. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Mark. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. And if you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.